Good morning, good morning. I'm Lucinda Gabriel, and today we are the 4th of September 2022. And so it's been uh, at least a couple of months since I did a live video, and uh, it's been an amazing time the last couple of months, and we've been doing a lot of traveling. And uh, so anyway, it's been, it's been a wonderful summer, and I hope and pray that you guys had a wonderful summer as well. And uh, the Lord spoke to me lately, and I needed to take some time off just to reconnect with the Lord. And uh, yeah, and just to see, you know, what's the next steps? What it, does He want us to do? Where does He want us to go? And uh, what did He want me to share with you? And you know, in the coming months. And so I have two videos prepared for you. And uh, so I'm going to share one today, and the next one might be in a couple of weeks. And so this one. I felt was the most important to share right away and it is called one hour left so um, yes and so lately there was a, a lady that I met and her son she told me that her son had two dreams and this is what I'm going to share with you today the true two dreams that he received speaking about how there's one hour left and so I also had a word from the Lord lately as well because you know like I said I wasn't doing videos I was on the road I was like super busy and just you know uh, organizing events bringing people into the kingdom and at the same time you know, just having to take time with the Lord and so this is what he said to me a couple of weeks ago he says you need to get back to doing your videos warn the people again to prepare the hearts with me they need to get right repent or reap what they sow those who sow discord will reap discord those who sow sorrow will see will reap sorrow people need the truth about what i did for them and so what did he do when well, he died for you he died to pay for your sins and for my sins because sin leads us to hell and all he asks from you and me is that you believe in him that you that you repent and turn away from your sins and you be baptized fully immersed in water and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so Acts 2 38 understand that sin separates us from God and Jesus died to reconcile us with God so God wants to forgive you and give you a new life but you must ask for that forgiveness now before you die because after you die it's too late there's no such thing as purgatory. So if you're a Catholic and you're listening to me, I tell you this with love. I was a Catholic. I believed all that stuff until I read the Bible for myself. And I read the New Testament, start in the book of Matthew, and you will see, you know, what Jesus was teaching. And it's not the same as what they teach. So there's no purgatory. There's heaven or there's hell. And if you have to choose now, whom you will serve who will it be will you serve the gods of this world money and luxury and uh, all the, the, the things that, that try to entice you in this world or will you serve the God the creator of the heavens and the earth the creator of the world so you have to choose today in this hour whom you will serve God said that they perish for a lack of knowledge and this means that you don't know God Many believe in the God they made up in their own minds, which is different than the loving God, loving but righteous God of the Bible, and know that the whole Bible is the truth. Everything, 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 everything in the Bible is the truth. You know, I've been uh, uh, studying uh, for the last four years. I mean, I've been with the Lord 24-7 for the last four years, and I've, uh, I've read many things, and I've I've listened to many things and I've come to the conclusion personally that the Bible is the truth it's the whole truth everything it says is true and a lot of things that they teach us today in schools is not the truth it's a theory the theory of evolution for example it's a theory the Bible is the truth so you can start there if you are listening to me now and you don't know the truth you're not sure what it is search it's Jesus said seek and you shall find knock and the door will open ask and it and it shall be given so if you seek and seek and seek he will show you the truth you just gotta ask him Jesus if you're real I'm asking you to show up right now I'm asking you to show up in my life today 
and you keep asking him to show up until he does and he will because he wants to be sure you have a pure heart and so it might take a few times for you to ask but it says keep knocking keep asking keep seeking and you will find so uh, that's it the Bible is the truth he also said nothing has changed under the Sun so there's nothing different today than there was in the past and when you read the Bible what I was amazed about when I read the New Testament for myself was like wow this was like written 2,000 years ago nothing has changed it's the same as if it was written yesterday it's amazing so uh, yeah, Jesus said please tell my people I am coming soon they need to prepare have oil in their lamps come out of the world and be separate sanctify themselves be sure to be without spot or blemish meaning without sin and be properly attired be born again I am coming soon prepare 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 warn 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 there remains a small window effectively to do what needs to be done and this is what the Lord had spoken to me in the past weeks and so you need to be taking these warnings seriously and God is serious and these times that we are about to enter are very serious and I know you might find it hard to believe that we're actually entering these times because the summer was just so calm and uh, it makes you you know almost suspect that well nothing's really going to happen you know everything's gone back to normal right you've taken all off the facial stuff and uh, and there seems to be less talk although I don't watch the news so I don't know uh, but anyway I just I just felt like you know there was less pressure to conform do you know what I'm talking about and so it gives you a false sense of security but it's a false sense of security anybody that has read the New Testament that's read the book of Revelations you know that we are entering the end times everything is there showing us what's going on just a few days ago I saw uh, you know energy crisis in Europe you know their their electricity went up by I think it was 50% or 25% or something in one day I mean like the things are happening very quickly so you need to be finding the truth and getting right with God while you still have time so during my travels this summer I visited with a sister whose son had had a dream about what is to come the first dream was on February 26 2020 and so that was two and a half years ago he would have been about eight years old at the time and this is what the boy said to his mom upon awakening he says we were at a church our family with our family yeah our family and with our cousins family and several members of the congregation when Jesus came down and he took some people with him and then he left the rapture had taken place so her son was marked by the detail that not everyone left with Jesus and that was an element that this sister had voluntarily kept from him to protect him because he was a young child he was eight years old she didn't want to frighten him but God revealed it to him in this dream so the boy knew about the return of Jesus the rapture of the bride but he did not know that only a select few will be taken those who had set themselves apart and so that really shook me that an eight-year-old would have had such a vivid dream about the Lord taking his bride and although you know I know it's biblical and I know it's gonna happen sometimes we just have a hard time you know imagining it right and so it just brought it all back for me and shook me up too when she said this and so in Matthew 24 it says uh, verse 36 but of that day and hour no one knows not even the angels of heaven but my father only Jesus is speaking but as in the days of Noah so also will the coming of the Son of Man be for in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will it be when the Son of Man comes so two men will be in the field one will be taken and the other left two women will be grinding at the mill one will be taken and the other left watch therefore for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming but know this that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come 
you would have watched and not allowed this house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So Jesus is coming soon, and we need to prepare ourselves for his return. I already made a video about this, and I invite you to go check it out on YouTube. And it's called the Prepare for, for the Return of Jesus or something like that. So next week, or the week after, God willing, I will share with you about the coming persecution. That's the next thing that the Lord spoke to me about really clearly. And, uh, and it's coming quickly. We need to prepare now. We need to be awake and sober, the Bible says. In 1 Peter 4, verse 7, But the end of all things is at end. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So there was a second dream that this young boy had. And this dream was on July 22nd, 2022. So only two months ago, this boy had another dream. So the boy, who is now 10 years old, dreamt that God spoke to all humans to tell them that they had one hour left. One hour left. After one hour, each human entered a box and they either went up or they went down. That's pretty shockingly clear, isn't it? So what does one hour represent in the Bible? Well, an extremely short period of time. A very short period of time. There's one hour left. So what, uh, what do the humans have one hour left to do? Well, you have one hour left to choose Jesus as your Savior or not. That's what it all boils down to. So I think that should wake everyone up. If you literally had one hour left in your life to make a decision about heaven or hell, most everyone, if I asked them today, would, would you want to go to heaven? I believe everyone would say yes. So let me tell you that it's not by being a good person that you get there. And that is the shame in the sense that many people are deceived. Many people, they think that if they're being good enough, they're going to go to heaven. I used to believe that too until I read the word for myself. And I really pray, I really pray you pick up a New Testament and you read it now while there's still time to find the truth for yourself. So um, Jesus said that no one is good. No one is good but God. So he was perfect and he didn't consider himself good. It's also not by our good works. The Bible says that your good works are like filthy rags. So let me just look at a scenario with you. Let's say you committed a very serious crime like murder. And now you find yourself in front of a judge because we're all going to be in front of a judge one day. We've all sinned. It says in the Bible, everyone falls short of the glory of God, meaning nobody, nobody, nobody did not sin. Everybody has, uh, has lied, uh, even if it was to a child. So everybody has sinned, right? So everybody has something. And so let's say that you committed the crime of murder, for example, and you come in front of the judge and you're not going to say to the judge, well, look at all the wonderful things I did. Do you think that you, you would be let off because you did a few or even many good deeds? Would it be fair to the family whose son or daughter you killed or you hurt? Would they care if you did good deeds? No, because there are rules in society, right? There's justice. There's rules to follow and there's justice. It's the same thing with God. He gave us ten commandments. And we are expected to uphold these commandments. And Jesus gave us even more. So does he have the right to judge you? Of course he does. And he will. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, verses 27, 28, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. 
So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. So he came as Savior once to save us from our sins. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. So those who accepted Jesus as Savior, who, who saved us from our sin because we asked for forgiveness, he will come back for our salvation. We will have eternal life with him. But if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you will not be forgiven. You will not have eternal life. It boils down to that. It's not it's got nothing to do with us. Whether we are good or not, it has to do with Jesus who was good. He's the only one. God is the only one that's good. So how do you enter God's kingdom? Well, it says in the Bible, by getting born again. Jesus said no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. And unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Go read John chapter 3. How do you get born again? Well, you repent from your sins. You uh, get baptized in water, full immersion, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't stop there. You have to live a sanctified life. That means you have to stop sinning. And the Holy Spirit, when He lives in you, and it's not just being sealed like some people call it, he actually has to live in you. You have to hear his voice. You have to heed his voice. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. You hear his voice. You follow his voice. And you stay sanctified. John said, seek peace with everyone in holiness, without which no one will see God. We have to be seeking holiness, which is sanctification. And so that means without sanctification, we will not see God. So how do you prepare for Jesus' return? Well, like I said, you, you, there's a video I did on that, and I won't repeat that, but I invite you to go find it. And uh, maybe I'll put the link in uh, if I can. Second Peter uh, chapter 3, the day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Therefore, since all these things will dissolve, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the day of the coming of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. That's what we're looking for. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in him in peace, without spot or blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. So you, therefore, you, my brothers and sisters, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So, be prepared. Be prepared now for Jesus' return. There's not much time left. How much time? I don't know. Is it a month? Is it a year? Is it three years? I don't know. But Jesus keeps coming and telling me to warn you that the time is short. The time is short. He's coming soon. We need to find the truth. So I'm here every week, week after week after week, to tell you to go read it for yourselves. Read the New Testament. Matthew, John, the book of Acts, Romans, and understand the truth about what Jesus did for you on the cross. The Bible is the truth from beginning to end. God is so big and so great. Know that he would never, ever let someone change the Bible that much that it would destroy the truth, like people couldn't find the truth. You know, there are little things, you know, between the different versions, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's not that different that you wouldn't find the truth. So read it for yourselves and seek the truth while it may be found. Seek God while he may be found because the time is coming. It's going to be too late. When he shows up in the skies and every eye, it says, every eye will see him 
um, every mouth will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, every knee will bow. And when that day comes, my friends, it will be too late for you. It will be too late. You have to find the truth before then. It's the last hour for you to choose. And maybe that choice is going to be made before it even shows up. Because, you know, the mark of the beast is coming. The beast system is setting up right now. And you will have to make that choice probably in one day. Are you going to take the mark or not? And if you take that mark, forget about Jesus, right? Read Revelations chapters 13 and 14 and find the truth there for yourselves too about what is happening. Many difficult times are coming. And so when you see them happening, pull close to God. Draw close to Him and He will draw close to you. You call out to Him and that's it. So that's my message for this week. We are going to have uh, two weeks of PTS school here and it's going to be wonderful. And so if you have needs, reach out and we'll see what we can do to help you. If you want more information about our schools, discipleship program is starting in uh, all over Quebec in the next couple of weeks. There's going to be online and in person depending on where you are. Just let us know and uh, we can see what we can do to help you. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week and we'll talk to you again soon.